Ole Miss also in action on Saturday at Arkansas, where they haven't won a game since 2008, needing to win this one to keep their playoff hopes alive, and they do just that. Doesn't start out great, the Reds in the red zone, on their opening drive, but they get stuffed. It's a turnover on downs, and by no means the way they wanted to start, but let me tell you, it was pretty much the only thing the Rebels did wrong all day. The defense forced a fumble there. Princely Uman Mielin is there to drive on it, and the scores... And the Rebs score, they go up 7 0. That was kind of the key, the ignition here. Jackson Dart going to fake the handoff, toss it over the top to a wide open Daquan Wright, who had himself a day. And then it gets crazy. I mean, crazy good. Dart, 62 yards to Jordan Watkins for, get this, one of five touchdowns the duo would connect on on the day as the Rebs absolutely roll the Razorbacks. 63 31. Dart and Watkins having career days in the win. Our backs are against the wall. Um, each week we, we know that and uh, we understand the, the expectation that we have for ourselves. So um, we played the chip and uh, honestly, you know, we feel like um, each and every week, you know, we got nothing to lose now. So um, we're going to go give it our all. You know, it's a statement game for us and, you know, we were able to come out here and really show the country that what we can do. Uh, you know, there's a lot of talk <clears throat> and uh, just being able to persevere over it and uh, really, you know, just come out on top today. I think it, I think we woke a lot of people up. Yeah, massive, massive game from both of those guys. Just extraordinary. They both uh, just won SEC co-offensive player of the As week. they should. Yes, and <laughs> there's good reason. They set a ton of school records. Dart setting the single game passing record with 515 yards and the single game total yards record with 562. That was set back, guys, in 1969 by Archie Manning. He is now also the all-time total offense leader in school history and the winningest QB and today named the AP National Player of the Week. Meanwhile, Watkins broke the school's single game yardage and touchdown record in the game and did it all just over a week after his daughter was born. Talk about a, a good couple weeks for Watkins right there. He said uh, his baby daughter came a little early, came during the middle of a game week uh, before Oklahoma. He was tired. He leaned on his teammates a lot. And then he had a great game against Oklahoma and then comes out and puts on that kind of performance against Arkansas. I mean, just an insane couple weeks for him. But exactly what Ole Miss needed. Like, that was my moment where I watched that game and I was like, okay, they are a playoff team. If that's the way they play, they are a playoff team hands down. Obviously... They get through Georgia this weekend, but that kind of performance, and especially the second half as well against Oklahoma, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if that's the way they're going to play moving forward, let's see what they can do because yeah. that was impressive. Jordan Watkins had four routes that I saw uh, that were some of the best route running I've ever seen. It just felt like he was wide open every single time. Yeah. Like, it's just – Separation every time. It could, because at, at a glance, it looked like, oh, it's just blown coverage. Mm. But, no, he torched his man. I don't know why anyone would play. Now, Arkansas didn't play man defense the entire game. Uh, they did go to zone a little bit, especially in the second half. But I don't understand why any team would play. I, I mean, Georgia's one of the only teams in the country that can play this Ole Miss team man to man, especially if they get Trey Harris back. They may not be able to do that. But that's what Arkansas tried to do throughout this game. This was something that where Ole Miss got their swagger back. Mm-hmm. We've talked about it, kind of to draw it back to uh, the Memphis Grizzlies a little bit. We talk about it with the Grizzlies and how they're, they're a vibes team. This Ole Miss team is really like that as well. You see how passionate Jackson Dart is and, and how fired up he was when they didn't get that one sh- uh, that shot in the red zone mm-hmm. uh, and they had to settle for a field goal and he was on the sideline like – uh, yelling. 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 Yelling a lot. Yelling he said, a lot. Throwing his helmet. Yeah. He used some choice words I don't think we can uh, say on TV. Yeah. Uh, so, no, I mean, I don't have a lot more to say on it. Uh, I thought it was good that, that Henry Parrish Jr. could get in the end zone twice. It seems like he's figuring out more ways to – score touchdowns against SEC uh, defensive lines, uh, something that they're really going to have to key off of against Georgia because they're not going to be able to put up as many yards in that game. Even though Georgia has struggled throughout the year, their secondary has struggled, uh, even though they have the best secondary player, Malachi Starks, in the nation. I think they're going to need Henry Parrish a lot in that Georgia game. So that was good for his confidence. It was good for everyone's confidence, especially to do it in Arkansas, and you don't have to hear, whoo, pee, <laughs> nearly as many times as we thought we would. You're better at that than I think you want to admit. What, doing the whoo, pee? Yeah. I know what you're saying, man, yeah. and I don't like it. <laughs> and I don't like it. I'm not from Arkansas. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, all I said was you're better at that than you want to admit. That's all I'm saying. Uh, my thought on this game is, is particularly that 
obviously the offense was explosive. Uh, and whenever you have a, a guy like a Jordan Watkins that you can connect with five times, uh, the way he is linked up with Jackson Dart has to do give Jackson Dart so much confidence, right? Because Trey Harris has kind of been that uh, security blanket for him over the last couple of weeks, really the whole season. And Trey Harris, I think, still top 10 in, in yards and touchdowns, and he's been out for two games in the entire country, which is crazy to me. Um, but what really impressed me is just, like, the defense has really found its stride here. You get, yeah. 10, you get 10 sacks against Oklahoma. You follow it up with eight sacks against Arkansas, and they're now the, the, the leading team in the country in terms of sacks. And I think that's what has been so impressive to me is that as much as we're not seeing complimentary football with Memphis, we are seeing complimentary football with Ole Miss. And I love to, I love what the defensive line, what they've been able to do in the trenches in particular. And when you've got a, a defense like that, that has to give Lane Kiffin so much confidence in terms of being, a, being aggressive on a fourth down and being okay with the, whatever the results are of that because you know you've got a defense that can kind of back you up on the back end. You can be aggressive in the red zone, all those kinds of things. And that leans into who Lane Kiffin is as a head coach and a, and a play caller. I, I think this, uh, this Ole Miss team is a playoff team. they got to go prove it uh, against Georgia. And, to my, and my thought is you don't, you're not going to get a better shot than what you're going to get this weekend. You get Georgia – at home in Vaughn Hemingway Stadium, and they've got to come in there. And Georgia has looked shaky. I mean, yeah. quite honestly, they, they played Florida this week, and like, yeah, they beat them. I think we're seeing like Georgia's the second half team. They kind of come along when they decide to come along. But if Oak or excuse me, Ole Miss can put the pressure on them early in the game, you mess around and put 24 points in the first half. Uh, I think you can see a scenario where you got you get Carson back with some happy feet. He's thrown 11 picks this year <laughs> already, and, and, and if they're in a situation where they got to throw the ball against this Ole Miss defensive line, it's going to be problems uh, yeah. for the UGA defense. Carson or, me, Beck for the UGA Bulldogs gets rattled. There's something about it where mentally he's still trying to work through it. But we've seen it. We really saw it in that Alabama game, and then he's able to kind of get back into it. But it's almost like. I don't want to go real in-depth on Carson Beck, but it's almost like he needs a pep talk during the game uh, because he is not the leader of that team. As much as Georgia wanted him to be that leader, he gets rattled very easily, and he's going up against the best defensive line in the country. Uh, this is a very good matchup. Uh, and also, he's not Jackson Dart. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference between Carson Beck and Jackson Dart. There's some similarities. Uh, and also, if you if you break down, I'm not going to do the whole matchup right sure. here. But Ole Miss does, in some categories, edge out Georgia a little bit in the skill positions. Uh, now, they don't have Cash Jones, though. So. Yeah, that's yeah. an issue. Well, we'll talk more about that matchup on, on Thursday. We, let's talk about these SEC stains. as we've graduated from needing two graphics to just needing one graphic. So that's time. a win for the week. Uh, the, with the win, the Rebels sneak into the top half of the SEC. They're now seventh. They'll see the number two team in the country, the Georgia Bulldogs, on Saturday. Texas A&M, LSU, Texas, and Bama all ahead of them.